Okay, let's talk about hormone replacement therapy. That gets a lot of publicity as well. And as I said, every time I read a paper that says it increases risk of breast cancer, I read another one that says it doesn't. We've been using HRT since the 60s, and it hasn't really given us a large increase. I think the large increase has come with probably being overweight, drinking and smoking. So whatever effect it has is probably small and will come some figures that we're supposed to use that go through that. What HRT does, and if you look on the top right, what it does, it really effectively treats the symptoms of the menopause. So if you are struggling with your menopause, please take HRT and see how you feel. A lot of ladies will feel so much better, they will carry on with the HRT. So it provides relief from the symptoms, also helps present, prevent long-term psychological changes. If you go to the bottom left, it has side effects. Now, interestingly, the commonest one I see is breast tenderness. And what I tend to find actually is ladies going through the menopause often find they have joint pain, they're tired and their hair loss, and the HRT would actually help with those. So although they are listed as side effects, they're usually things that ladies are experiencing as part of the menopause, and HRT actually helps get rid of those. And on the top left, you can see the hormones we use. Estrogen, spelt the American way, with an E rather than OE, progesterone, testosterone. Testosterone is, is quite often forgotten um, in HRT. Ladies like men have testosterone. Ladies have a much lower level in the same way that men have estrogen, but at a much lower level. And it's also important if you're thinking about HRT, there are alternatives and it's lifestyle changes, complementary therapies, alternative medicine. All these can help with your menopausal symptoms. So it's not just a matter of having synthetic hormones. There are other things you can do. And what we tend to say to ladies is try HRT if they're struggling. Try it for three months. At the end of three months, you'll know. At the end of three months, another thing, I will otherwise think this is brilliant and having this or we think it makes no difference. And you'll try something else. Now, in terms of what it does, the figures we're supposed to use, so for ladies who are currently using it, and those within five years of stopping, the relative risk, okay, which doesn't tell you whether you get anything, increases by 1.023. Now, that's a small amount, okay, for each year of use, okay. If you've used HRT for less than a year, there is probably no increased risk in breast cancer at all, if there is one. Now, the average age of menopause in this country is 51. So you've got to take HRT beyond the age of 51 for it to give you an excess risk of breast cancer. If, for example, you have to have an operation to have your ovaries removed under the age of 51, you can take HRT to replace your normal hormones until you're 51, and that will not give you an excess risk of breast cancer because you would normally have had your normal cycling hormones until you are 51. Okay, and again, I sometimes see ladies who unfortunately had to have their ovaries removed in their 30s, who when they get into the 40s, they're told you can't have HRT, you've had it for 10 years. The answer is, yeah, of course you can. You have it until you are 51. That's the average age of menopause. Now, the, the risk with combined HRT, that's estrogen and progesterone, probably might double the relative risk if you take it for more than five years. So what we're supposed to say to ladies who go on HRT is you take it for a few years, which between two and five, and then we recommend that ladies try and come off it. Now, we're told you can just stop it. I think that's unfair. What I normally say to ladies is you come off it gradually and you see how you feel. And what most ladies do, about half of them, I suppose, will come off it slowly. At the end of three months, they come off it, they think, oh, do you know, I feel fine now, I don't need it anymore, and that's okay. The other half will just under, as they come off it, they'll get to a dose that's slightly lower, and then they drop it again, and they'll think, hey, my symptoms coming back, I don't like that, I'm going to go on it again. And I don't mind that either, as long as you're aware of the pros and cons, and the potential relative risks. Interestingly, the risk of patches tends to be much lower, probably, than the risk of tablets. If you've had a hysterectomy, because progesterone can affect the lining of the womb, and potentially might increase your risk of cancer of the womb. So if you had a hysterectomy and you take estrogen only HRT, do you know that might actually decrease your risk of breast cancer? So it's never that simple. Does it really cause breast cancer or does it just make a breast cancer you're going to develop turn up more quickly? Don't know, might do. So in other words, it might not actually be a bad thing if a breast cancer turn up and you spot it more quickly but there doesn't seem to be any evidence that there's any particular sort of breast cancer that does it. And the other important thing is, is the risk of HRT, whatever it is, and it's much smaller than the Daily Mail would have you believe, it's an independent risk factor. So again, I see lots of ladies who said, oh, I was told because my mother had breast cancer, I can't have HRT. The two risks are not related. 
HRT may have its own small risk, it might, but however strong your family history, we talk about that, it doesn't add or multiply that at all, it's separate. So if you are really struggling with the menopause, whatever your family history, you can have HRT as long as you understand that it has its own particular low risk. Okay, it doesn't stop you having it. If you're feeling miserable with menopause and HRT helps, please take it because it will help you, but you take it for a few years where a few is between two and five. Okay. Probably we're supposed to say it increases the breast cancer, risk of breast cancer a bit, but only if you take it beyond the age of 51 for more than a year. And as you come off it, the risk will drop again. So I hope that helps clarify some of these about HRT, but it goes back to this relative risk and absolute risk. And it's the relative risk that's a difficult concept, but it's not as high as we think. In general, this is the take home message with HRT. The risks are small and outweighed by the health benefits. And this is, this is not my opinion. This is the opinion of the profession, profession as a whole. Okay. And I think most ladies will agree if they take it and feel so much better, they will accept the risk. What we tend to find is ladies who are on HRT are much more conscious of their health. They will come probably every year and have mammograms and keep a check on things. Most ladies I see like that, we meet year after year and you know, nothing happens. Very occasionally, we look at the mammograms and go, oh, hang on, something's changed. But if that's the case and you're having your mammograms every year, remember mammograms are low dose x-rays deliberately so you can have lots of them. If you pick up a breast cancer small and early, it's still a shock when it happens, of course it is, but you will cure it. So I think in general, the risk of HRT is small and outweighed by the health benefits, but it is an individual decision. So if you feel like taking it, please do, but don't let anybody tell you you can't take it if it works for you. Equally important.